Well, hello there, everyone. Um, yes. My name is Adrian Warnock, and I'm here with a new friend of mine. Um, oh, my goodness. I practiced how to pronounce your name, and my mind has gone completely blank. So, do okay. you mind just uh, reminding me of how Ibis to say your name? Ibisido. Ibisido. <laughs> yes, Ibisido. please. And uh, your son's name is Nathaniel, isn't it? So, Ibisido. And what's your surname again? Nabena. Nab Nabena? Nabena. 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 Yes, please. Yes, yes. So, um, it's really wonderful to welcome um, to the uh, Facebook Live and all other places where this will be going out. Um, someone who's been hiding in my little Facebook group for a little while, Blood Cancer Uncensored Facebook group. Uh, mm -hmm. You've been a bit of a, you've been, you've been there, I guess, reading stuff and perhaps getting a bit of encouragement, but you haven't posted. Uh, but you've got quite a story, haven't you? And um, right now, there's a bit of a crisis on, but it's also an amazing story of how things have, in a sense, you've been in the right place at the right time, um, in, even though it's been a terrible situation. But why don't you give me the heads up of what's happening right now with your son, Nathaniel, and, and, and what the need is, and then we'll get into the background. Okay, um, thank you so much um, for this um, piece. Um, I am grateful for the opportunity, at least to be able to speak um, my son is nine years old, and um, at the moment, uh, let me give you like a the front story to the back, because um, at the moment, he's in remission. So a lot of people will not understand the word called remission. But you see, when you have cancer cells in your blood or your bone marrow, and they are under control, that is what they call a remission. So we had uh, a 60% blast as at... Um, um, November, when he was diagnosed, first of all, that it is in his bone marrow. Earlier on, we've been having a, the swelling of his eyes and it will go down, swell, it will go down. We had no bl blood or bone marrow involvement on, up until November that we came here. So, um, you know, cancer or leukemia, you can never tell how it goes. It comes any form, it takes any shape. Today, it can be this, tomorrow it can turn to this. It can even come in five or six different ways. But we thank God um, for his message. Finally, he's in remission after a long journey from November. Yeah. Um, when we got to the hospital, that is Great Ormond, the system here in Britain is very different from where, what we have in Nigeria. The system here, they have specialized hospital that treats such and they have local hospital that just manage yeah. whatever symptoms come. So from the local hospital Croydon, we really did not get much, much, um, much into what was happening. It was when we got to Great Ormond that we found out the true situation of things. Yeah, so what does your son have again? It's AML? It has, yes, he started with what they call a myeloid sarcoma hmm. of the soft tissues in the orbits which um, after a while, according to science, it will always develop into AML. Okay, but you didn't know that, obviously, uh, presumably when you were in, in Nigeria. Yeah, when, when we were in Nigeria, we had two, in fact, the problem was we had a diagnostic problem. Yeah. At the end, of, one time we also got that it was a rhabdomyosarcoma. Yeah. One time we got it was a lymphoma. One time we got it was non-Hunkins, you know, we had a lot of different different variants of the word, the big C. So yeah. we're not too you sure which one. cancer and you knew it was in his eye and you, mm. you had to have his eye removed, essentially. That was the sort of story of what happened in, in, uh, in Africa. And then yes, you tried yes. to come to the UK just to get a prosthetic eye uh, yes. for him. Is yes. That right? yes, please. Yeah. And, and then something remarkable happened because, and this really struck me today, actually, I'm, I was just reading up again about AML. And I don't know if you even know this, um, brother, but there's only 100 people in the UK who are children who are diagnosed with this condition every year, only 100, mm. which is a, a tiny number when you think we have 60 million people in this country. Um, mm. Only 100 children are diagnosed. So imagine the odds that your son, who just happened to be in the country visiting with this problem with his eye mm. should be one of those 100. I mean, that's the first sort of miracle, really, in a way. It's a strange thing that you should be. It's in one sense very unlucky, of course, and unfortunate, and but also in the other sense, you know, the best that you came here because there are chemotherapy and drugs and the opportunity of a 
stem cell transplant yeah. a baby here that wouldn't unfortunately been available in quite the same way if this had happened to you uh, in Nigeria. This, this is correct. Am I am I am I right? Yeah, yeah, yes. In in Nigeria, the the doctors can only try. Um, we all know that we do not have the facilities to handle such matters. And should be told, I've seen a lot of kids die. Yeah, of course. Over this, um, I could name them off my head. It's been a trauma to me. I have a lot of parents that, I, as I speak today, they're grieving over their, their kids. So you're part um, of the Facebook groups for AML parents, is that correct? Yes, please, I am, yes. Yeah, yeah. So yes, I am, this yes. Is one of the ways that I, I came across to you, there's um, a number of um, British families and other families from elsewhere in the world who, mm -hmm. who correlate. And I, I don't have AML, but I do have um, CLL. Um, and okay. So, uh, in a sense, it's almost as, op as much opposite to, to, to AML as you could get because CLL is chronic, whereas mm -hmm. AML is acute. Yes. So that tells you immediately it's an aggressive, life-threatening. So this is the thing, you know, you only had really weeks or months to sort this out. And, and you were told, weren't you, that he was too sick to go back to Africa. Um, yes. like, so why didn't you just take him back? Well, you couldn't take him back. And, mm -hmm. and he would have died. And even in the UK until recently, a lot of these kids would die. And even now, some of them die. But this new drug, Venetoclax, which funnily enough is used for CLL as well. It's a, a great drug at dealing with um, dealing with blood cancers of all kinds. And uh, it's used a lot in, in my conditions as well, CLL. Um, mine is a leukemia, so it's the same, but it's a mm -hmm. lymphatic leukemia as opposed to a myeloid uh, leukemia, which is what your, your son's got. And I do have a little graph, if anyone's interested, where they can see um, where these different cancers fit into like a kind of family tree, but they're all blood cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously some are faster growing than others. Some are slower growing than others. Um, often the faster ones now, if you have the right treatment, you can sometimes even cure them. And that's obviously the hope for your boy, isn't it? He's responded really well to the first yes. treatment. Yes. But yes. You know, now I want to come back to I want to come back to the the drugs we used. Um, when you mentioned CLL, I just my brain just went back to the Benetoclax. Yeah. Um, my son um, was actually put on Benetoclax, and um, is that a sin? You know, those are drugs that are not readily available back home. Yes. And but they've only you recently know, become available in the UK, to be honest. It, they're they're yeah. very new drugs. They're not, yes. they're not old drugs. So this is, again, you know, you were in the right place at the right yes, time. At the right time. The money wasn't, wasn't available initially. Although then again, the Daily Mirror, I think, helped, didn't you? And some people have volunteered and given and donated. And again, that's an amazing thing. But so you were in the right place. You've got the right drug. And then now what? What's the situation now? Now, uh, the situation is um, after getting him to remission, um, like I said, cancer comes in any form and it's not what people joke with, especially leukemia. So the doctors in their wisdom and in science have said, look, the best way around this is in as much as your son's blast is 0 0.001, yeah. we will not take chances. We would rather go ahead with the stem cell transplant. Yeah. And um, earlier on, we had a very huge bill of about 825,000 pounds. Yes. I saw that in the, yes. in the mirror, you know, come on, let's yes. raise 825,000 pounds. Yes, yes. But, but that's like, shrunk now, hasn't it? How is, why did that shrink? Yes, because first of all, um, I just want to say something. It's a miracle, first of all. Yes. Because um, the doctors in their wisdom were moved by something I don't know, decided that they were going to treat the boy and waive their fees. It's amazing. Yes, so it's amazing. What here is doctors who work for the NHS, but then also do private work. And yes, obviously please. people come from all over the world, wealthy people come from all over the world to Great Ormond Street mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and, and will pay. If they've got the money to pay, they'll pay. Obviously that wasn't your plan. You came for the eye, not, mm -hmm. not for this treatment. And so I guess, yeah, as you say, it's quite something because obviously they can't do this for every child. Um, yes. And I guess maybe it's partly because it's so rare, only a hundred kids in the UK and their hearts have gone out. But this is a... It's like God has given you favor with those doctors. These doctors are giving up a lot of money and giving their time for free. And there's now just the hospital fees and and a yes, it's just it's just the medications and the hospital fees, which is amazing. Um, I mean, that's yes. amazing. Yes. So, which is um, which is about they said we have to raise two hundred and one thousand, apparently two hundred and two thousand. Mm -hmm. Now they also did this um a match a try a tissue typing with my son and my his my other kids myself and my wife 
mm -hmm. we were not a complete match. But what the doctors did was they quickly went to a court bank to get a match. And um, to, I'm happy to say that we already have a match already. Yeah, now this is amazing. I, th I think this is another miracle. So we, we have to understand there's a number of amazing coincidences here. Number one, mm -hmm. that your son, you know, was diagnosed with this eye cancer, had it treated, had it removed then came to the UK for the prosthetic eye. So uh, number two, that when he got sick, you know, it was really quite quickly diagnosed. And even in the UK, sometimes these things are not diagnosed properly. So mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Number three, Great Ormond Street were able to help him. Number four, the mirror quickly raised the money for that initial mm -hmm. treatment. That's an amazing miracle. And, and, and then number five, the, the doctors have agreed to, to waive all their fees. And now number six, and this is one that, again, many people watching this may not know, but only 20% of people who, well, don't look like me, let's just put it that way, who aren't, <laughs> who aren't Northern European um, in origin, and that this, the, only 20% of those people will get a match. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that's partly because of the history, I think, with the fact that obviously stem cells, I guess, I don't know where they started, but there's certainly been a lot of drive in the UK, in America, in mm -hmm. Germany, in France, and all of those places to get people on the register, although we still do need white people on the register too, because there's only, I think about 70% of people will get a match if they're white. Mm. Um, but only, and this, this is a shocking statistic when you think about it, only 20% will find a match if they're not white. So that's black, Asian, mixed race, any kind of ethnic origin that's not white. And obviously one of the big things, I hope that anyone watching this who uh, it wants, is moved to want to do something. Obviously, there's donate in order for the money, and we'll talk a bit more about that, I'm sure. But also, mm -hmm. you can just get a swab done of your mouth, um, yeah. especially youngsters. Anyone who's under 30 particularly is useful, but even older people can do it. And if you do, if you are a match, it's just literally giving your blood, and they take mm -hmm. a certain part of your blood, um, and that can save your life. Or in your case, it was something slightly different, wasn't it? So, what, what, where was the match from in your son's case? Yeah, it was from like the umbilical cord of newborn kids. Yeah, so, so you can donate like, umbilical cord blood. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. You could. Somebody did that. Yes, yeah, somebody did that. So pres um, presumably, probably somebody with a Nigerian background, because um, the reason the race is important is, of course, because of the different markers that might be on the on the cells, because it has to match. And so, mm -hmm. some some Nigerian parent who may never know this, mm -hmm. maybe in the England, I don't know, and decided to donate their cord blood. Um, to a bank and now your son can be saved i mean that's when you think about that that's six fairly big miracles already isn't it? very 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 big miracles um i am not worthy of the miracles but god um in his mercies and favor uh, made it available to me and um is a shock um I'm, I'm still in shock till now yeah that it could it could it is why me why is it me despite going through so much you know, but I I give God the glory for his messes. Yeah, it and it's easy to forget that the response wasn't guaranteed either, was it? I mean, I'm sure in February, when your son suddenly got so ill, and it is quite aggressive. I mean, there was there were stories yeah. of people dying. He was, he was so, so sick. He was in oxygen. He was very sick. He was swollen. He had tumors all over his head, his body. Was, his body was swollen, his legs were swollen, his face was swollen, all his gums were swollen. I couldn't even see his teeth anymore hmm. because uh, they had massive infiltrates. Massive, when I mean massive infiltrates. Um, the pictures are there with it. Like I said, it's a miracle. Even the hospital too, they're a bit, um, they are in shock of what happened hmm. because of the dramatic when I mean dramatic turnaround, because he was given days to die. Days. Days, just right. days. So, so, you know, he could have died a week or two before and he would have been in Nigeria. If he'd have got sick in Nigeria, then that would have been it. If he hadn't have been diagnosed quickly by the NHS hospital that you took him to mm -hmm. see, first of all, he would have died. Mm -hmm. And if the treatment hadn't worked, he would have died. Well, so yes. How did that make you? You must have felt terrible as a father at that point. You know, you, you told me earlier uh, on email that you got to a point where you thought maybe he, he was going to die. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I, I must confess, I was already already giving up hope. Um, I already said, okay, this is it. We were in the hospital, and um, he was on oxygen. 
whenever I will try to remove the oxygen, his, all his sats and all that drops. And I was told, look, in fact, let me just say this. I was, in fact, they have sent the chaplain to me hmm. and I was told that he wasn't going to see the morning. Wow. The, the chaplain had come, the nurses were there, the doctors just stepped out and he said to them, he said, look, when it is time, please call me to sign up the necessary papers. My son was holding his breath. He was shouting. So they had to give him some medazolam to make him um, to, to make him calm and not struggle towards passing out of the world so that it will be peaceful. Hmm. And it, it, I cried, I cried, and I cried. I, if, uh, I couldn't recognize my son anymore. He was, when I said he was swollen, you know, I've seen kids die back home in Nigeria because we've been in the hospital for a while. So I know when it is that end time. And I've told, and I've said, encouraged myself, well, God, thank you. You gave me. If you want to take him, it's fine. No more struggle, my baby. You know, but God stepped in. That day, nothing happened. He didn't die that day. I took him back home with oxygen and I brought him home to lie down on the bed. Hmm. And um, two days he was on oxygen at home. Hmm. He couldn't get up. Was this after he'd been treated or before he'd been treated? No, before he was treated. Hmm. He couldn't get up. He was just lying down on the bed. Wow. And at the, at the end of um, the second day, he just woke up and removed the oxygen max. Wow, that's amazing. And yeah. Somewhere around this time, you met... Um, someone who had contacts at the mirror, a friend who's become quite a dear friend, I believe, is that right? And and they were yeah. able to draw the story to the attention of, of one of the UK's most popular newspapers, the, the Mirror and the Sunday People. Um, yes. And, it, and, and then money came. <laughs> amazing, huh? Yes, that's why I said um, I today, till today, I cannot explain the situation around my son. I met the lady, you know, I've never seen her till today, mm. but she is- her online, I think, did you, is that right? Yeah. yeah, yes, yes, yes. She is so, so close and dear to us. Yeah. Somehow, somehow, you know, she is also a miracle and a yeah. blessing to us. So she made the whole cool connection. She helped us in drawing attention to our case because trying to assess, um, I found out that pediatric care in the UK is quite um, closed and there's no really um, private pediatric practice. Yeah, because... I mean, at Great Ormond Street, there is a little bit, but it's, it's, I guess it's hard to find your way in at some time. Yes, it's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm coming to that. It's very private. You, you, to get in, it's, it's, it takes a whole lot to get into Great Ormond Street private. Yeah. Yeah. The public part, the NHS part, not a problem. But yeah, because, of course, you see, and the reason for that is that for British people, mm -hmm. we have a national health service. And so mm -hmm. these treatments that you're getting would all be funded and they'd all be free. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we don't have um, we don't have the need really for the private, whereas I think Great Ormond Street is set up to to treat wealthy, very wealthy people. And I guess you came in and said, um, well, I'm not a wealthy person. <laughs> <laughs> you could say, by you the could grace say of God, yeah. I'm here, but you yes. know. I'm... No, no, the, the, thing was, the thing is that what I found out was that most of those wealthy people, their situation, or rather the, the cases of were, were treated by, the payments were made by their country. Right. You see, the, the issue about cancer is nobody. I repeat, nobody can handle that sickness alone. Yeah. No matter how wealthy you are, you can oh, yeah. never handle it alone. So the country pays for everything, even to their accommodation. You see, the British people, you guys have a fantastic template, which I believe most countries in the world should have. Because there's so much support. You see, this sickness, the big C, is not just the drugs. Yeah. There are other parts of it that need, you know, to be attended to. They have, you imagine you have occupational therapists, you have, you know, you have psych psychologists, you yeah. know, 
you have the social services, you have the symptom care team. It's not just uh, take the drug, take the drug. No, the treatment is holistic, yeah. which um, I have not seen anywhere else coming back, going back home. So do you understand what I'm saying? So this, yeah, is, sure. yeah. this, like, um, this is to say that sometimes most of our prayers have been answered by medicine. Yeah, and this is the thing. So, I mean, there'll be people watching this who are not Christians, and that's fine. And, you know, and it's the miracle of modern medicine. Uh, mm -hmm. I get that. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously mm -hmm. played a part here. But, you know, I'm not a great believer in coincidences. I like to call them God incidences, you know. <laughs> and I think your story is full of God incidences. That's what I'm mm. hearing. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. some Christians, though, they don't sort of, they don't see that. You know, I can, can you imagine, you know, that you're praying, God, heal my son. I'm sure you were praying, God, heal my son. Mm -hmm. And then you get contact with this lady. And imagine you'd said, oh, well, I wanted you to heal my son, not give me contact with a lady, mm -hmm. not, not mm -hmm. make me connected with the Sunday mirror and the, oh, sorry, the Sunday people and the daily mirror, mm -hmm. not, not raise money, not make the doctors change their heart and say, we'll give this to basically for free as near as, mm -hmm. as we can, you know, mm -hmm. not make my drugs work you know you said mm. god, i wanted you to heal me and god's saying actually i just am healing you yeah that's yeah that's, exactly that's just what it I'm doing by this a miracle yes that's just it you know even in the bible in the miracles in the bible they were not all um direct god turning the situation around in that instant yeah supernaturally not always yes yes not always so there were there was a process and, and god is a god of process he would always step in and do his work at every point in time. Yeah. There are instant cases. Yes, there are cases that where by the next day it's all gone. But then again, God has answered, God answered my prayers through, like you rightly illustrated, through those processes. Yeah. At every step of the way, when ho all hope was lost, yeah. God stood in. And so now, really, um, you're looking for another couple of miracles, you know. Miracle yes, yes. one. <laughs> Is a provision miracle. We need two hundred thousand mm -hmm. pounds in ten days, mm -hmm. because otherwise this window will close for treatment, mm -hmm. and the the condition we've been told will come back. Um, mm -hmm. AML doesn't go away without a stem cell transplant, but with a stem cell transplant, if it works and it's successful, this could be potentially even a cure. Is that correct? Is that what yeah. you've been told? Yeah. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. So this is amazing. So we have the opportunity. We have the match. You you know the mm -hmm. twenty percent chance. Your son's already gone through that hurdle. Mm -hmm. um, and so now we need to pray and people watching this can also give and they can mm -hmm. also share this video or share um, some of the other posts mm -hmm. um, publishing on Blood Cancer Uncensored website and on my Pathios website. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've spent some time getting to know uh, this brother and um, and getting to know um, this lady that's been helping him, reading up. And of course, this case has been followed up by the, the Daily Mirror for since February. So this mm -hmm. is a genuine mm -hmm. case. We have... Um, people in the UK who've looked into this and who are caring for this family at Great Ormond mm. Street and all the rest of it. So um, it's not often that I ask for money. Um, <laughs> in fact, I can't remember the last time that I've looked down a camera like this and said, please, guys, will you give some money? Because if a mm. few thousand of us all give £20, £50, £100, whatever we can afford, mm. this boy will be saved. And if not, um, all these miracles up until now will mean nothing because unfortunately Abby, you you will be burying your son and that's not something any father and your wife of course who you know isn't on this video and that's probably wise because it must be so hard for her um but you know this is not what we want for you guys mm. we what, what what i just um try to what i just was praying for is that um i probably i need the support right now for us to meet the target and get my son the needed stem cell transplant. He has also been very brave and wonderful. Yeah. He has shown that he wants to leave. So I I plead for you know everyone to help, even if you can't contribute, the prayers as well, and also help get the story out there. Yeah, that's right. There are a lot of kids that would be encouraged by this story as well. A lot of parents. Yeah. It is one of the hardest things um, in life as a parent to watch your child die yeah. in front of you because I saw those flashes 
when we had not received any treatment. Yeah. And I saw my son's condition go from bad to worse every day because I could not assess treatment. It is not a situation I would want anybody to be in. Yeah. And I also pray that the doctors will find a way or a, you know, God would open their eyes to get a permanent cure or treatment to this yeah. horrible disease called cancer. Yeah, no, you're right. And sometimes the stem cell transplant really can be that. So, you know, yes. um, one of one of my friends, um, the pastor of my church, uh, original pastor, now it's pastored by Topi Kolioso, mm. Kolioso, who's a Nigerian guy. Um, but mm -hmm. when it was first started, it was pastored part, by another pastor by another English guy. And his son had an acute blood cancer as a, as a child. Mm. And back then, I think something like 80% of kids were dying of these mm. acute blood cancers. But his mm. son survived. And I believe mm. he had a stem cell as well. I'm not sure. But he certainly did survive. And he's mm. alive to this day, uh, similar age to me, but younger than me now. Um, mm -hmm. so quite old. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> You know, but but you know what? The statistics, at least in England, have changed the other way. So that now many of these kids who get these acute cancers do survive, but not all. Mm -hmm. and it's obviously an incredibly traumatic thing. And one of the things that's impressed me about you, Abby, and hearing about you from, from other people is the fact that you are there supporting other parents as well. So you're going through the worst time of your life. Mm -hmm. And yet you're not just focused on yourself. And you posted about a, a little girl that had died. Um, so again, that was presumably someone you knew from one of the forums. And and you're you're in there trying to help other parents too. And uh, there's a real strong sense of community in the blood cancer uh, environment. And that's why I set up Blood Cancer Uncensored, um, mm -hmm. which is a website where you'll be updating us about the story moving forward. And also a Facebook group for, for people who are either themselves parents or, or themselves facing um, this condition like, like like I do. And I'm mm. obviously blessed because I'm two in remission at the moment. Oh, uh, really? That's yeah, nice. So, um, so that's good. And and my remission has lasted, um, well, two and a half years since I started treatment. But I have been told it will come back at some point, almost certainly. Uh, okay. And I've been left with certain other, other conditions ongoingly. And sometimes, you know, there are some issues ongoingly that, that can be a problem but many kids will do really really well on these on these stem cell transplants so that's our hope and that's our prayer uh, for you um and and it's wonderful i i i just wonder in the last few moments that we've got if you could just spend a little bit of time talking about how your faith has been perhaps challenged but also how has been a help to you in in, in this because i think being a christian and facing this probably is a bit different in terms of the hope that we have compared to yeah. you don't have that hope you know, being a Christian, it's um, it's tough and challenging and when you have crisis like this, because there are a lot of Christians, why me? Mm. Why not the devil? Why my son? And, and you know, the thing is that Nathaniel is my only son. So we are so close and it's um, there are times that I stopped praying, you know, because I thought why will I pray? But you see, God has always shown me that he is God. Mm. When the situations were, like I said, hopeless, I had said, okay, let's call it a day. My son, go in peace. But God, God came back and said, no, he's not done yet. There are times that you are overwhelmed you don't know the left or your right. But the truth about it is that God is always there. You might not see him, you might not hear him, but you will see things that are beyond your comprehension. It shows that there's something more supernatural working for you yeah. than against you. This matter would have been over, but the message of God said no. Yeah. And, and I guess you you must be facing it with this. Uh, the one I'm thinking of at the moment is the faith of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who said, Look, mm -hmm. God will save us from your hands, yes. King. Yes. But I guess you must have had moments in the last few months where you go, even if he doesn't, we'll st I'll still serve him. And I, I wonder if you could just talk about that, because I think, you know, we're talking here at, still at the, you know, you haven't had your full miracle yet, you know, mm -hmm. and obviously... 
it must be concerning at times because it's not a guarantee that the stem cell will work although hopefully oh, it oh sure oh, uh, it's sure. not a guarantee that you're going to get this money although now that you've had these seven miracles or whatever it is up till now you must mm -hmm. think it looks like god is in this but just talk to me about that even if he doesn't type of, of faith what does that look like for you and your wife oh like i i've told you before even now whatever it is goes south god is still god the nurses in made a crowding hospital they call me the stubborn man <laughs> <laughs> why it is because they keep when they keep saying this is what science says about the situation i keep telling them get me to an hematologist yeah i keep telling them take me to an hematologist i they said he would die i said i agree but let me just get to an hematologist because they, they they don't understand where i'm coming from it's just like the woman in in the bible with the issue of blood that says if only i could touch the hem of his garment yeah get me to an hematologist but you see God in his messes. I've learned something today. And Nathaniel's story is also a miracle. Even if it goes south, we, he, God has shown himself all the way. There's always a reference point that God's hand did something. Yeah. And I guess as Christians, we have a hope that even goes beyond this life um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that must mm -hmm. have brought you some comfort at those moments where you thought he was about to die that even if he did die that you would see him again let me quote my son mm. he said daddy i'm not scared of dying even if i die i'm going to heaven mm. wonderful that was what he told me mm. he said daddy i'm not scared of dying even if you die i'm going to heaven that's quite a thing for a nine-year-old boy to say, huh? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Wonderful. Mm, yes, it is. And, and, and it's come, come, he's here. He's here. He's here now. Oh, he wants to come and say hello. That'd be lovely. Mm -hmm. Daddy, please. Can I have this? Matty boy. Hello there, young man. Say hi. Mm -hmm. So see him here, see Nathaniel. <laughs> He's a bit shy. So yeah, you know, like I said, he needs to build his confidence back because of the the eye and the sickness. That's why we have all those operational therapists and all that talking to him and trying to psychologists working on him. But we thank God, it's a work in progress. Well, what, what, what a story and what a privilege that we have <clears throat> watching this and listening to this, that we can be a part. I've given my small amount. I may well give some more, um, but we can all give, we can all share, we can all share the story and um, hopefully see the mm. amazing deliverance of God in this, in this situation. It's a wonderful story. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'm going to say goodbye. Is there any last thing you'd like to say to our viewers? Thank you so much, um, Andrian, for your for this. It's it is also a miracle, you know. Such things don't just come. Um, they come, and also I want to thank people that have helped so far. People that have contributed, prayed. And this is also to any parent going through what I am going through to have faith and have hope. Um, things happen like this. It is not from the witches or the wizard or whatever it is. I know um, a friend told me, he said, God has found you worthy. That is why it is. this is happening to you. He knows you can handle the situation. So don't give up. And I hold on to those words so dearly. So every parent that is going through whatever it is, 
as regards a sick child, it might not be cancer. I just want you to just hang in there. These kids were given to us as caretakers. Sometimes the future um, scripture is fulfilled because the Bible says children are given to us by God to take care of. And sometimes the load might be too heavy. I just want you to understand that God is always there. You might not see him, you might not hear him, but he is always there, doing the best he can do in the sin, or rather doing the best he has done. Um, thank you all so much for this. And um, God bless all of us. Yeah, God bless you. Yes, God and bless you, brother. Please share this, like it, donate. And we'll see the, 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 the happy ending of this story, I hope. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care.